To get a job as a game developer, you really do need to have a good resume. So today we're going to talk about what makes a good resume, what makes a bad resume, and we're going to go over some actual game dev resumes in the process. We'll start with two junior developer resumes and then one senior one. Talk about what I like about the junior ones, what I don't like, and what the differences are between the junior and senior resumes because there is a big, big difference. But before we get to that, there are only three days left of the Ultimate Game Dev course campaign, so if you haven't checked it out already, I definitely recommend you go do that right now. With the Ultimate Game Dev course, you'll learn everything from the very fundamentals of game development to how to build, brand, and successfully launch your games while building the skills needed to apply for a professional game dev job. I'll take you through building multiple game types while teaching you how to write clean, scalable code that you can be proud of. And Thomas Bress will teach you everything about how to create art for your games and how to become a full-time indie game developer. The course features over 160 hours of content and we've added a bunch of additional assets and tools to help you better create exactly the game that you wanna make. There are only 150 seats available and most of them are already gone. So check it out if you wanna take your game dev skills to the next level. We're going to start with the junior resumes. I've got two of them here and both came with a cover letter. So let's read the cover letter, talk briefly about it, and then dive into the details of the resume and what I would change because there are definitely some things here. So to start off, it's got all of their contact info at the top, which I'll blur out and hide, including a LinkedIn profile, a GitHub profile, and, and some email. And then it says, subject service offer for a job as a game developer. I'm not sure exactly what that means. That could just be getting lost in translation, but it's a little bit confusing. The next part though just reads like a normal cover letter. It says, Dear Jason, following your offer on YouTube, it is with enthusiasm that I send you my CV to offer you my services as a game developer. I'd also like to confirm my interest in your company and my motivation to work within your team as an intern or junior. Now, I want to... um stop for just a second and mention something here. When you do talk about people's companies in an actual CV or an actual cover letter like this, make sure that you're um, referring to it by name. In my case, it doesn't matter. But if you're applying at you know Ubisoft or something, say my interest in working at Ubisoft, this specific studio, even maybe it's you know, Ubisoft in Montreal or whatever specific one or Sony in wherever place, make sure that you put in the, the specific one that you're interested in just so that it doesn't come across as generic and that they, they they know that you know you're actually writing it to them and then uh, i'll continue on again doesn't necessarily apply when you're writing it to me but if you're writing it to somebody else it says as a graduating student in a video game programming in video game programming at college of bdb I'm not going to try to pronounce it um, i had an opportunity to acquire a solid experience with and then here's a typo within it should i think it's supposed to say within or maybe with Unreal Engine and Unity and C++ and C Sharp programming, and I'm eager to join the video games industry as a programmer in the near future. So that sentence, um, it, to be honest, it just reads a little bit hard. It could just be, again, a, a translation issue, but it comes across as a little bit difficult to understand exactly what it was. So it says to kind of get the idea that you went to school and um, got an, some Unreal and some C Sharp, I guess and you want to get into the game dev industry. But the, the wording of it and the misspellings and things are the big problem there. I would rephrase it so that it's easier to read, maybe two sentences, and fix all of the misspellings and the, and the grammar issues there, just so that people don't get confused reading it and actually continue on. So I, I also have a strong background as a game designer on a 3D isometric MMO over the span of 10 years using proprietary tools to expand the scope of the game by creating and adding new content and pushing it to the live game frequently. That's really cool. So that's the right there, kind of showing that you've got experience working on some game thing for quite a while, probably as a hobby or maybe as a full-time thing. It's hard to know from here. I know because I've read on, but from here, it's hard to see. So here it says, I therefore have actively participated in development of content on this role-playing game and taking place in a persistent online universe. Um, yes, I don't know that you necessarily need this um, sentence or that it's worded the right way either because you kind of want to mention that you helped manage and maintain the online service. But um, yeah, it just seemed kind of like an, an extra sentence. Let, let's continue on. 
It says, in addition, the skills I've developed in computer science during my life make me the ideal candidate for a position in your company. Finally, I have a driver's license and a vehicle, and I'm available full-time, and I'm bilingual. So the bilingual part makes sense. It explains some of the, the grammar things. It still makes sure that you get the... the um, Spelling issues fixed, because those, those are simple. Driver's license and a vehicle, I don't know if maybe I'm weird, but I just kind of assume that anybody applying for a position has no, no problem getting to it. So I don't know that it's necessarily needed there, um, unless, again, that's some big issue where you are. But where, where I'm from, if, if you don't have a way to get to work, then you probably shouldn't be applying for the job, because you gotta, you got to be able to get there somehow. Um, but the part above it says that I'm the ideal candidate for a position in your company. That that one is, it feels very generic. It feels like, a, it just feels like a generic sentence that doesn't really ring true. Like, you want to kind of, in your cover letter, talk specifically about what skills and what things you can bring to that project or to that company, not just like I did some CS stuff, so that makes me ideal. Like almost everybody applying has done some CS stuff, so that doesn't actually, that's not the thing that's gonna make you the ideal candidate. You gotta push for the things that are gonna be the specific ones um, that they're gonna care about that you have. And then they're hoping for a better opportunity to assess their skills and stuff. So let's continue on and go into the actual resume. Overall, the cover letter, I would say is like about a five out of 10. It hits some of the things, but like I mentioned, needs a lot of work. The resume itself also um, had a couple of things that I wanted to note. First, it starts off with a pretty good summary. It says, a motivated programmer soon to be graduating the college of BDB, eager to join the video game industry as a pro game programmer in the near future. I love that statement, love that sentence. I think it, it works perfectly as an introduction for who you are and what it is that you're looking for. It says you're skilled in C++ and C Sharp with a strong background as a game designer on a 3D isometric MMORPG over the span of 10 plus years. I think, again, still pretty good. The one part that starts to get a little bit confusing here is which job are you applying for? If you're applying for an Unreal job, then I think it's probably pretty good because you've got C++ there. If you're applying for a Unity one, though, then uh, you should probably, at the very least, rearrange those and have the C-sharp at the beginning. And then here it says, I have great mind for problem solving, eager to constantly learn and add skills to my toolbox and keeping knowledge and skills up to date. That's that's good. I mean, that's something that you should have, but it's not super useful right up the top. And then passionate how to design and you speak multiple languages. These parts I think are not very useful up at the top. I think the summary is good. Um, the, the statement's there. And then I would go straight to skills, cut the rest of this. And you know you could drop... Um, the language is down in skills or something if you needed to. But I think that these parts already kind of come across, or, or at least they, they should, or they sh at least shouldn't be there. Now let's go to the important part, the skills. And I think we talked about this in the last video, how moving the skills up to the top is usually a good idea. And I see that that's what we've got here. Skills are right up at the top, but there are a couple issues with it. First, got game engines. Well, it's not pluralized, it should be. And it has Unreal, Unity, and Raylib. And then programming languages, C++, C Sharp, and HLSL for, for shader writing. Then you've got text editors, which is just a list of the different code editors available. Uh, version control systems, which seems to just be a list of the version control systems available. Project management systems, the same. Again, like, yes, they all exist and we can all use them. And then uh, analysis, code review, design patterns, UML. And then at the bottom it says game development, game design, document, and game loop. So overall, I think that this skill section is in need of some love. It needs some work to really show and highlight what it is that you can bring to the company. So, you know, knowing how to use the text editors or the, the tools is kind of a, a given and a basic thing. I, I mean, it's something that you're going to have to know, but it's not, um, it's not enough to have in your skills. You should probably call out some of the things that you're good at with Unreal or with Unity. If you have anything that you really like to do in there that you're skilled at or that you find interesting, um, call those things out. You know, put some of those there and maybe uh, cut down a lot of the the extra the, the tools and stuff, or, or maybe even move that into a familiar tool systems. Or, you know, to be honest, like, 
I, I think that the IDEs and editor stuff, just list the editor that you use. If you use Writer, you use, put Writer there. If you use you know, Visual Studio Code, you know, use, put Visual Studio Code. You don't need to list all of them. Everybody knows that you kind of know all of them. But put out those skills like, you know, good with 2D physics or, you know, maybe you're good at 3D math or you're good at um, you know, putting art into, into the game and making it look beautiful. Whatever it is, like, try to call out more of those skills, more of the things that are relevant, especially to the job. So maybe even modify it and call out the skills that you have that are more relevant to the specific position. Um, and UML is probably never going to be one of those, one of those things. Uh, let's go on to the experience. So experience is... Um, Pretty short, but that's what you expect as a junior developer, or at least not. Um, it's actually, it's not really short. It's just a short list. So the, the time period on it is long, but the list is relatively short. And just as they worked on a game, um, adding new content, which I think is good. I would maybe put some more of the cool accomplishments or things that you have that you did in here. Like if you did anything that made a huge impact in the game or a huge impact for the company, um, now, if you can call those things out, you know, whatever it is, upgraded the system from you know, Windows 95 to Windows NT, or again, I'm just going way back to like a, a olden days, but you get the idea. Put some more of those things that you've done in there. And then in the education section, I think you're, that yeah, looks fine. The last thing I wanted to mention on this one was the GitHub link, because while it was up at the top, when I clicked through and looked at it, it wasn't actually really relevant. It was uh, not game development related stuff, and the picture probably wasn't the best for if you want to put out a big, you know, happy, smiley face of come hire me. So I would recommend maybe changing that picture and putting some game development stuff related or game development related stuff there, or just take it down and not put it in there for the game dev jobs. If it doesn't have game dev stuff in there, there's really no value in having it. Just going to distract and confuse people, get them away from the important stuff like your actual game development experience that you've been working on and for a game for quite a while. Now let's take a look at junior developer number two, who also sent a cover letter. And this one is kind of long, but let's just read through it real quickly. I'll try to read fast. It says, hello, my name is Tom. I just turned 27. I'm writing this cover letter to accompany my application. Hopefully this will give you a glimpse of who I am and what my relevant skills are for this position. That's what a cover letter should do. That's great. I would love to write an entire book. But I'll try to keep on topic, so please do not hesitate to reach out for more information slash a chat. I'm very approachable, I promise. Great. So it says, for the coding aspects of the position, as you can see on my resume, I have a bachelor's degree in digital arts and entertainment with a major in game development. This was mostly in C++, and in my spare time, I worked in the Unity engine using C Sharp. This is also what I use the majority of the time in my current job as a software engineer and what I use during my internship at a game studio in my senior year. Oh, sorry, what I used. This experience provides me with a solid foundation of OOP and event-driven programming, both of which I use a lot in my job and personal projects. As far as game design goes, I'm very aware that I have a lot to learn, but I have a few core skills down that I believe are the most important to be able to continuously learn, namely a passion for games and the entire creative process combined with it, curiosity and respect. I love attending and watching talks by passionate people and collaborating with different departments, finding the middle ground between our wants and needs and figuring out a solution that works for everyone. Okay. In the job description, there are a couple of points listed that really speak to me. This is great. So this means that this cover letter is aimed at the specific job. And this one was aimed um, for a job that they applied for. So this makes a lot of sense. And it says, as mentioned above, the working together with other departments to create solutions for gameplay mechanics based on design would probably be one of my one of the most fun aspects of my job following only the play session. So this is saying that they, well, I think what they're trying to say is that being able to work with the design team and the art team, probably mostly the design team, and give them the ability to do what they want sounds like the most exciting part, which to be honest, when you're working in a AAA department or a AAA game, that pretty much is like the most exciting thing. Like, hey, look, now you guys can do this, do something awesome, then they do something awesome, you get to see it. So I get enthusiastic quite easily when it comes to game development, but playing something you've had in hand, had a hand in creating, sorry, 
or even better, watching someone else play it for the first time is honestly the peak of professional happiness for me. So they really just like to have people play their stuff, which every game developer is going to do, I, I think, or m most of us will. Lastly, the main thing to know about me is that I'm a gamification enthusiast on a daily basis. I'll try to create little challenges or games, mostly against myself to complete routine tasks or chores. This gives me a blast of easy motivation to get through some dull times needed to get things done. My biggest passion as a designer is player systems. A big topic has been following recent rework of World of Warcraft Blizzard stuff and prime example of what you'd like to do down the road. So here, this just to be clear, I want, I want to make sure that this is obvious. This last paragraph here says, hey, I, I'll be a programmer, but I really want to be a game designer instead. Um, so unless that's something that you think they're going to be okay with, I might just uh, kind of cut that or minimize it and make it not seem like you would jump on the opportunity to quit and go work as a game designer instead because that's kind of the impression that it might give off, um, which is a position that a lot of programmers start off in. They start off wanting to be a game designer. They learn to code. They really like the code, and then they still kind of want to do the game design stuff, and then they realize that uh, with if they keep doing the code, they're going to make a lot more money, and they, they decide to stick with that. <laughs> but we'll see. Anyway, that, that was my only concern there. And then it says, thanks so much. If you made it to the end of the story and don't feel, even if you don't feel an immediate spark between us, I'd very much, I'd be very appreciative to have a chat, even if it's just for a conversation. This is a very long run on sentence. I, I'd probably cut this down too. I, that one just got difficult to read. Um, but you're basically asking for feedback. Um, so I, I, yeah, I'd probably shorten that down a little bit. I think there's probably a little bit of opportunity to shorten it down so that it at least fits onto a single page, but overall, it's a pretty good cover letter. Now, let's go on to the resume. So, in the resume, there are, I think this is where, where you need a lot of work. The cover letter was great. The resume, not so much. It starts off with one of the things that I think I talked about last time, a picture that I would generally recommend not having. If you're required to have it where you are, then sure, but otherwise, I would leave that out. Then the entire left side doesn't give me a lot of information. It's like the contact stuff, two different positions that you're applying for, systems designer and technical game designer, which now makes it a little bit even more confusing because all of the skills are um, programming stuff and the things that are focused on. And even that sentence that I, or the statement that I made in the cover letter gets a little bit confusing because Obviously, if you're applying for designer positions, then that would make more sense. But it, it's very, very mixed up in here. So let's continue on. Um, contact info, that's all always good. And birthday, I would definitely leave out. You don't need to put your age in there or just have negatives. There's, there's no positive to it. Nobody's going to go, oh, hey, they're that age. That's perfect. That's exactly what we needed. There's some people that say too young, too old, or whatever else. So just leave that out. Then the personal profile, this part I actually liked. It says, newly graduated with a master's in game design and bachelor's in digital arts and entertainment. Proven track record and team collaborations both as a developer, designer, and project manager during my academic years. Looking to take the gaming industry by storm. Love it. Sounds great. And um, I mean, it's kind of like the rest of the writing in the cover letter. The writing is really good. Um, it's, again, more just the layout that we'll talk about in a second. It says, if you have room for someone with excellent communication skills, eager to learn, open to new possibilities, look no further. Um, okay, I don't know that you necessarily need that sentence in there. The first paragraph is probably fine. Then you've got the skills. Bars for languages, I would probably get rid of those completely. I generally don't like bars, and it makes everybody just stop looking at everything else on your resume to go look at Dutch, English, French, and then think like, oh, I wonder what his accent sounds like. That's, uh, that's all this is doing is distracting people from the important stuff. Let's go on to the rest of the skills, which are kind of weirdly categorized um, below languages. So... Design, agile workflow, iterative design, conducting playtests, and documenting. Um, none of these really tell me what you're good at with game design. So if you're good at you know, enemy boss design or level design, um, those types of things, that's what I want to know. I want to know, you know if you're applying for design positions, what parts of the design are you going to be good at? Not like what processes are you going to follow, but what parts are you actually going to be really good at, at putting forward? Is it you know, setting up um, combat systems design? Because if that's what it is and you're really good at the math and the sheets and the data behind that, then cool. 
highlight that if it's level design and you're really good at making you know fun areas that are replayable or whatever it is call that out then you've got programming down below which again it's starting to get a little confusing because now it goes back and forth like is it game design or game programming um i think that it's good to have them all but it might be you might want to focus less on them um if design is the thing that you want to do. It, otherwise, put the programming up at the top. I, it, it's kind of tough because you've got that wide set of skills and it just depends on what it is that you're applying for. But here it's very kind of mixed up. Then tools, you've got Unity, Visual Studio, Code, VS Code, uh, GitHub, Git and Photoshop. Uh, that's fine. I mean, I would probably move like, you know, languages down there and maybe even, you know, uh, I feel like you almost need like an extra section of just the stuff that you kind of are loosely interested in or, or kind of loosely know, like Python, JavaScript type script and all that. And then the section of the stuff that you really want to focus on. Let's go to the experience now, because this experience um, starts off with that you've got mostly using C Sharp and SQL as a C Sharp developer or .NET developer to do new features and handle support tickets. So here it shows that, hey, working as a programmer and I guess working as a programmer wanting to get into design, but you've also got a cool skill here that's not listed in your skill section. SQL and database stuff is something that not everybody knows how to do and almost every game company needs or needs something similar. I was a, most of the, especially the bigger game companies are going to have some database stuff. So it's a good skill to call out. Um, it does show that you're currently a programmer, though, and still makes it a little bit confusing on what it is you're trying to get into. And you've got the game development intern, and this is probably the part where I had the most feedback. So here it shows that you've done quite a bit, you know, developing stuff, managing projects, and designing games, but I would reword this into one of these really nicely written paragraphs that you've got, like you have in the... Um, in the cover letter and in the profile. Instead of listing it off as I'm an intern that was doing three different jobs, because it kind of comes across as like I was filling these three roles as an intern, um, you should probably, what you're going to do as an intern, you're going to be like kind of bouncing around trying all kinds of different stuff. But I, I would write this more as a more descriptive paragraph explaining really what it was that you did and what what you brought to the team, the different, the things that you were developing, or maybe the thing that you developed and helped manage and helped design. Um, talking more about your specific um, contributions to that, because I think that with the way that everything else is written, you should be able to do a really good job of that. And then the rest of it, um, I, I don't really have much to say. The education stuff all looked good. I had to go look up what some of the things were, but overall, uh, that's just a different country thing. It looked like everything was relatively good. My general recommendation, though, is I don't like these split resumes at all, where there's some stuff on the left and some stuff on the right. It makes it very hard to just go linearly down and find the important stuff, and it makes it hard for you to put the important stuff you know, at the like front top of the, the screen. On the last one, we had that summary. I like something like that, a good summary statement, kind of like what you have in your personal profile right up at the top, followed by your relevant skills to the position and your relevant work experience. And then everything else can come after that. And, you know, just keep it in that order. And that's, I think, what will do, do the best for you. Now let's take a look at the senior resume because you're going to notice something very different here. In fact, you probably noticed that the format of this resume is exactly what I just said. It starts with a great summary. Senior Unity developer with multiple published games for all desktop platforms, WebGL, and on the Apple Play Store and Google Play. Tells me a lot right there. They can develop games. They've published games. They've gone out to mobile on multiple platforms. They know how to do web stuff. And they're kind of all over the place on their development. They can probably hit anything that I need them to hit. Next, we've got skills and abilities. Highly skilled using Unity, expert in C Sharp with 15 plus years of experience. Great. Mobile game development using C Sharp and Unity on iOS and Android. Kind of called that out again, but just making it very obvious. CI and CD pipelines using Unity Cloud Build. Great. So they know about how to automate things and make it nice and fast so that we're not wasting time doing builds. Azure DevOps, Plastic SCM and GitHub. That's also perfect because Plastic's what Unity is using. GitHub is what most people are using. And Azure DevOps is one of the most popular options. It's like uh, AWS for anybody that doesn't know, but you probably know that. Uh, Multi-user registration using PlayFab. 
Great. So they know how to do online stuff, REST and web APIs, and they're handling Agile and Scrum. Or they've got that one on there. That one, of course, doesn't matter too much, uh, but the rest of it is great. I think that having this list of skills is kind of perfect and exactly what I'd be looking for. Next up, you got relevant work experience. So they've got indie game developer for their own company. And here they've got that they designed and developed a 3D space shooter. They designed and developed a 2D Angry Birds clone using hand-drawn art they drew themselves and added increasing challenges, mini games, pretty cool. Designed and developed and published a Space Fortress game, implemented the CI and CD builds, and set up multi-user authentication using PlayFab. And this is all since uh, May of 2020. So three games released on their own as an indie in the last uh, two years or three years. That's amazing. That That is really good and shows you know a lot of activity and a lot of drive. And then the next part, other experience, senior software engineer working on, um, okay, other C-sharp and .NET stuff. So it sounds like they've got experience doing C-sharp and .NET. And if I scroll down, there's even more on, on that experience. And uh, they've got their own 3D game development stuff going on too. It seems almost like a perfect resume, um, other than the fact that there was not a, a cover letter because it's not really a, a good thing to write a cover letter for because this is an actual position. I loved this resume. I love how succinct it is, how short it is, and how just direct to the point it is. It shows the skills. Um, it would definitely go into my you know, interview pile. I would go, okay, yeah, it definitely skilled as a Unity D, senior Unity developer. Seems good. So look at this. I think this is a great example. I don't have any real negative feedback. If anybody watching in the comments has some thoughts or feedback for this one, please drop it down below. Or if you got something for the other ones too, of course, you know, comment and let us know. I'm curious to see what other people think, but especially on this one, because I didn't have any, um, either, I just didn't see anything wrong with it. It seemed like a a great resume for the the position or for where they're at and what they're trying to do. So it looks really good. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I hope that this was somewhat helpful. If you've got a resume you're interested in having um, checked out or talked about online, just send it over to me. Uh, drop a comment down below. I'll tell you where. And uh, if not, and you just like it, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, share, and all that stuff. And I'll see you in the next one.